this looks like it's being filmed on a potato. I'm on my um, spare phone again for the second time in the last few months. Um, one of those classic budget angles, I dropped my phone down the loo. Uh, <laughs> And it was, um, yeah, it's, it's dry now, it does work. Um, it charges and everything, it's just the cameras are a bit steamed up, so um, no good. Yeah, it's my own fault. I uh, had a um, few Zoom drinks with some mates last night and it ended up going on until 2 a.m. Um, a few cans of beer and then a bottle of wine, sort of break on the rain, not the best. Um, yeah, so a bit of a muzzy head and phone knackered. But um, as you can see, I'm near some water. Uh, although this is a bit of a bust so far, I've come out to, I've been just basically looking on Google um, satellite imagery or aerial photography, whatever it is, um, just following tributaries of the rivers that I've been fishing um, and just seeing what they're like and I've come out to this stretch here, um, it's, it's really nice, it's crystal clear um, but it's very very shallow like an inch deep um, and what I'm hoping to do today for you is show you I bought a, I've blown the budget angles budget and bought a centre pin reel uh, a sort of a it's an entry level modern one um, but I'll talk more about that in a bit um, so I'm going to go off and see if I can actually find somewhere to wet a line because just this is just not doing it for me I've chucked in a few few bits of feed a bit of bread a couple of maggots um, and there's not even any minnows coming out so it has been quite cold so the fish could just be shelled up somewhere but they're not going to be shelled up anywhere where it's about two inches deep and become easy pickings for a heron so um yeah, hopefully I'll get a couple for you though. Well, just giving you another quick update on the situation, guys. Um, still trekking along the same little tributary. Um, this bit looks better, but I've just upstream of it, there's like a big surface water drainage discharge thing, and, it, and the water just smells horrible coming out of it. And um, I haven't seen a hide nor hair or anything. And, and upstream of it, there are a couple of um, egrets fishing, little egrets. Um, but no, no, not even any waterfowl downstream. So it feels a little bit dead again. Um, and so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tackle. Because once I tackle up, I'm kind of limited because I can't. I'm on my bike, so I can't travel with rigged up gear really. Because I haven't bought telescopic. I've bought. So I'm using the centre pin. I've bought a three piece float rod, match rod. So that's kind of the challenge. Um, is finding somewhere where I can at least sort of walk with the bike for at least a few hundred metres and, and have a good chance. And here there's just a couple of accessible points and um, it's just not doing it for me. Um, sort of that's the... It looks good. I mean, it look, you know, I think we've had a bit of rain last couple of days. Not much, but just enough, I think. And it's just probably washed a lot of crud off the off the um, highway into the, into the water system, which uh, surface water drainage is, you know, diesel particulate and stuff. It's not that nice. And it, I think it probably will put the fish off. So, I, I, but I know further um, downstream from here, there are there are more places to try. So I'm going to continue my trek. Right, here we go then, guys. First baited cast with a centre pin, and I probably should have watched some videos on YouTube on how to actually do this. I've only ever done it fly fishing a couple of times. I've never ever caught anything. And let's see what we can do. Right. right, I'm already seem to have tangled it up somehow. Oh, we're on. Fish on. Fish on. That feels alright as well. Oh, it's in the snags. Come on, out you come. That's it. Hang on, oh no, this was not a good idea. You can't just let go of the reel. <laughs> right, let's put the drag on. Is it still on? Yes, it's still on. Can I net him? Well, there you go guys, an extremely lively little tiny brown trout with some beautiful red markings on him, absolutely brilliant. First fish I've ever caught on a centre pin and um, it didn't quite go to plan but I got him in so that's the main thing.
There you go, guys, a beautiful little roach. Just got a little nip in its tail there. Oh. There you go, lovely little, another lovely little rope here. Excuse me how filthy my hands are, I had to scrape a load of leaves and mud out of the mud guards on my bike. But um, yeah, cracking little roach on the uh, pin, centre pin mill. There you go, cracking little, uh, another little brown trout there. It's just starting to get a little bit sort of dim and dark now, but at least I'm getting into a few fish now because it's been a knackering day. I've, I've, I've suckled about 12 miles and walked about six, so uh, it's nice to actually get into a few fish. That's a bit of a better one there guys, cracking brown trout, absolutely went mad on the light gear, really really good fun, hopefully you can see some of his colours coming through there, really really iridescent and the lovely red spots on him, brilliant fish. Bit of a better roach there guys, really really nice. These are brilliant fun on the centre pin, I'm really really enjoying it and it's, it gives you such nice control. I'll, I'll talk a bit about the reel um, in a bit. Right guys, just to talk you through the um, new rod and reel. As you can see I'm not fishing anymore, it's a couple of days later I'm now in my mum's garden doing this, which is where I'm crashing at the moment. Um, so it's the, the reel is a damn quick shadow, <laughs> not damn quick but that's the brand DAM, um, I don't actually know what that stands for to be honest, I'll have to look that up. Um, it's It was 50 quid, this one the, it goes from about 70 to 50 quid, I got it on eBay, um, I'm not going to stand here and sort of say you should go out and buy one because I only used it the once and um, it seemed to be alright and I was quite happy with it and the rod is a it's a John Wilson Wilson Mirage Flow 11 foot uh, they're made by Jarvis Walker as you can see there on the logo and um, this was 32 quid from at, from Angling Direct with free delivery I was in the market for a lighter float rod because my um, Fladden Chieftain that I was using was I think it was 13 quid on Amazon I had, had it a couple of years and it's really really heavy it's lasted well and it's pretty bomb proof um, but just I've just noticed where I've been roving a lot that the rivers lately um, it does sort of you know it just gives a bit of, bit of an ache to the arms so I thought anything lighter is going to you know make me a bit more mobile and just be a bit more comfortable to you so that's the idea behind the new stuff which you know I don't buy very often I'm not going to stand here and tell you to go out and buy branded stuff I'm not a sponsored channel and not really going out for that sort of thing either just out showing people what's possible um, so I just talked you through how I was using the reel and um, and my sort of thoughts on fishing with the centre pin um, obviously it was my first time ever doing it and um, it was good I really enjoyed it um, but yeah we'll talk about that in a second right so just talk you through the um, just sort of the way you know way I was using it it's slightly different from a fly reel um, which I think I've talked about a little bit before on a video um, it's got the, the, the sort of the drag button there the free free lining option as you can see that's just the weight of a float there that's um, got no shot on it whatsoever that's probably a couple of grams just stop that um, and that's just pulled that straight off there running through the eyes nice and smoothly um, and, and that gives you the 
basically the option of when you're trotting it to control the speed completely manually so um, I won't talk you through that now but I'll just talk talk about casting so that's really just that you know that that button what that button does there on the reel right casting wise what I was doing was turning the drag off so effectively letting it into the free free running mode using my thumb there to sort of control it and then you just take some of the line off and I've just got my thumb on the side there controlling the speed. And as you can see, as I'm pulling, I'm not really pulling the float up, but I'm pulling the line down there. And then that's given me a bit of um, sort of line to cast with. And I haven't got much room here, but just flick it. And as you can see, that's there. Then if this was on a river, that would already be off trotting. And then, so what you do is obviously ignore how I'm positioning the rod, but I was sort of holding it at that sort of angle and just using my thumb to let that line off as it goes like that, just slowly, you know, and you just adjust it to the speed. You just use your thumb to guide it um and then what you know once it gets to the end of the trot um you can retrieve it um i just was retrieving it um just on the free free wheeling mode but i think you could do that switch the drag off and retrieve it the other way although you do get the the rattling noise like that if you want to cast it a bit further take a section of line from the next eye up as well so you're effectively doubling your distance there now, I've nearly pulled the, the float to the tip of the rod there. So you just want to let the line go through your fingers to readjust that. Um, for, and I, th I think that's going to come with practice, to be honest. Um, and it, it's doing that because I've got the two. And then what you've, what, as you pull your arm right down there, so I've got, you probably can't see the line, unfortunately, but I've got double the length there. And that gives you um, effectively double the casting distance. And I mean, ignore that. That wasn't really a double the distance because I haven't got any room, but that, effectively um, is how you can how you can increase your casting distance and I did find that um, that was adequate for the small stream more than adequate I overcast a few times and you, you'd be surprised what sort of distance you can get you know if you've got you can have a rod length you can have the rod length again before the float sort of brushing or touching anything if you've got plenty of space then you can pull out your line and probably get equivalent of another rod length so you can get you know a cast of three rod lengths which for this is you know 33 foot so um, that's absolutely fine. So just to recap the way, so once it's cast, you know, you're controlling the line using that. You've got it in the free, free, free reeling mode um, and you're just using your thumb to let that line out. And I mean, if you've got a heavier float and a faster flow, the, the float will pull the line out and did. But of course, if it's, um, you know, the flow's a bit faster than your reel's allowing, just, 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 just use your thumb and, and tickle it out. Um, and I found it really, really great for control. And as that's going out, you're keeping a constant tension to the float. And so that means when you strike, you're not, you've got not got any slack and compared to a fixed ball reel, it was absolutely fantastic I was um, yeah really pleased with how that was working um, I'm really really impressed with float fishing with a um, center pin so just talk for a couple of the issues I noticed um, I think when I put the line on um, it sort of got a bit of a it's got a bit twisted and just so when a lot came out there was it was twisting together so at some points and it did get me a couple of tangles so that's just one to watch when you're loading the line spooling it up um, make sure you're not getting any twists so keep the spool that you're taking it off from fixed um, and that could happen if you, you get a twist um, I also a big thing I noticed was the fact that there's no gearing system to the reel um, as I'm retrieving it you're just getting for every turn of the reel you're getting one turn of the one one turn of the line taken on if you know what i mean for every revolution where on a fixed spool you you can they're geared so you can get you know for every turn you can get three or four wraps of um line on the spool so that it actually made the retrieval time for a really long trot you know quite considerably longer and i mean it didn't really make any difference i mean say considerably longer over the course of all day it'll only be a few minutes but it's, it's just worth bearing in mind and something i really did notice um and another thing I noticed as well is when I was just a couple of times, I don't know if it's because the line's new or the type of line I'm using, I need to do some more research into it. Um, perhaps you guys will know um, and can comment below. But um, where I, every so often the line would get stuck on the reel slightly. So as I'm sort of using my thumb to, to let the line out, um, it, stuck and went back round on itself and so then you're going the other way to to, to re-release that and so it just meant that as you were trotting you got a little you know the flow got held back a little bit um unintentionally of course you might want to do that when you're trotting but 
you choose not you don't want the real sort of doing that and of course another thing is you can't if you've got it in this free really mode you can't just let go of it like you would a normal real forget about it you've always got to sort of keep your thoughts on it and and keep in control otherwise um you know you could be getting all sorts of trouble and it i mean once that float comes to the bottom look that's going to carry on spinning and effectively you've got line coming off or getting a tangle so it's just worth bearing in mind if you've never used one before um but yeah i mean from the, i mean i can't i'm not recommending this go out and buy this particular one but in terms of of something different and and the the control and just the almost the novelty of it i suppose it was it's fantastic and i'm gonna i can't wait to get back out and try it at the weekend to be honest absolutely brilliant There you go guys that's more like it now that is a proper two-hander roach that is absolutely lovely he's really thick as well that is a cracking roach absolutely brilliant right guys well hopefully that was a useful video for you i didn't film an outro here um but i'll leave you with this fantastic picture of um that fantastic last roach i caught um hopefully it's been useful and informative um giving you a little bit of insight into the center pin because i know not that many people use them um but just from my very brief experience with it i would definitely recommend it it really really was great fun and um as i was saying earlier i can't wait to get back out and give it a go so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed that please hit that thumbs up and drop me a sub and come and check out all my social media and i'll see you guys in the next one cheers guys fish on <laughs>